Hi, this is Ian from EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to this video lesson in which I'm going to be showing you how you can make your one-handed backhand more like the one-handed backhand of Stanislas Wawrinka. And big congratu congratulations to Stan on his recent Australian Open win. I'm really happy for him and his breakthrough. I love watching him play. And in today's video, I'll be showing you some super slow motion footage of his backhand, as well as showing you the three main ways that you can make yours more like his. First and foremost, we need, we need to talk about positioning. Too often, recreational players are trying to hit one-handed backhands out of their strike zone. By strike zone, I mean where it's comfortable to hit, which is typically right around waist height. And height is key on the one-handed backhand. If you're trying to make contact high, hitting an effective shot is extremely difficult. So I have a ball machine set up here to, to feed me high, deep shots, and here's what I see way too often from club players. They'll just let the ball get high and try to hit, you know, the best shot they can back. Sometimes they'll get away with it, you know, just basically trying to neutralize the point, but you can do better than that. And if you look down after a high one-handed backhand and you see that you're just a foot behind the baseline, that wasn't good enough. You either should have moved into the courts and taken the ball on the rise at waist height, or you should have moved back to allow the ball to drop and then make contact. So here's what that looks like. You're gonna see me turn to the side and use either a shuffle step or a crossover step to move myself back and get in position to let the ball drop. So here it comes, I'm gonna turn, move back, let the ball drop, and then make contact at waist tight. I'm just gonna do one more. So position, and then hit. Here's a, a quick super slow motion clip of, of Stan doing the same thing. And you'll see he's way back behind the baseline. He's a good 15, 20 feet behind the baseline, almost at the back fence, but making contact in control, in balance, and as close to his strike zone as possible. And that's really my, my goal for you. If you find yourself way back here and still hitting high, then just tell your opponent, nice shot. They had really good depth on that shot, probably some topspin, and you, get, you gave it your best effort. If, on the other hand, you find yourself here making contact high, that's not good enough. You need to do a better job of reading the incoming shot and then positioning yourself correctly. So that's the positioning part of this. The second of three things that we're gonna focus on today is contact. Contact point on a one-handed backhand is crucial. And the most common mistake I see from club players is they make contact very close to their body. They get jammed. And I'm not just talking about right to left, but also up and back, depth-wise. When you see good one-handed backhand players make contact, they're making a fist at the ball. So if I were to face the, the main, main camera here, you'll see uh, a square hand, a square racket face facing at the camera. And we're going to look at a clip of Stan in a second. But very often, what I see from club players is they make contact very close to their body. I'll wait for a little bit deeper ball. And they look very jammed and scrunched up. And so they're, they're kind of like fighting the ball off as they make contact. And it's very difficult to hit a good shot that way. It's very difficult to create pace. It's very difficult to create topspin. So what we want is an extended arm at contact out away from the body. Really, extension is probably the best word for it. So that as you make contact, you're extending out away from yourself and giving the racket and your arm room to actually do what it needs to do to hit a good shot. So here's a quick uh, clip of Stan, a different one, hitting his one-handed backhand. And I'm gonna pause right at contact so that you can see the position that his hand and his racket are in. And this is what you'll see basically across the board as you study one-handed backhand professional players. And that extended arm at contact and kind of making a fist at the ball at contact is crucial if you want to have a comfortable contact point. The third and final piece of the puzzle is the follow-through. And when it comes to ground strokes in general, for your average club level player, your average player is making a very short, relatively speaking, swing. Usually very tense, tight, 
and their follow through usually doesn't extend much past where the ball was made contact with. The higher level you get, typically the longer and the more relaxed and the more fluid the swing is. So what I don't want to see from you at home is contact and then just like a, a choppy, tight kind of block of the ball. Um, you know, you can, you can hit good shots that way, but your consistency is going to suffer and your potential for power and spin will be lower. I can promise you that. So I'm going to recommend one of two finishes for you and we're going to look at examples of Stan doing both. Um, one is finishing with the butt cap pointing towards the court surface. So that's here. So in, in a, with a smooth fluid motion up to there. The next, if you want to take it one step further, is actually allowing the racket to release fully and finishing with the butt cap pointing towards your target. So that would look like this with a full release. Either way, you should be extending your arm. Remember a uh, contact point from there, you should be coming up. So either way, it should be a high, long finish. And either way, you should be fluid and relaxed as you make that follow through. So those are the, uh, the top three things you should be working on on your one-handed backhand. If you can get in better position with the ball more consistently, make contact in a good spot relative to your body, and finish with a longer swing on average. If you can do those three things, then I can guarantee you that you will have a better one-handed backhand. So work on all these elements. You'll get yourself that much closer to stand. How much closer, who knows? You know, it's gonna take work and there's more to it than what I just presented, but these are really the core elements. So if you enjoyed today's lesson, do me a favor, click like if you're watching on YouTube. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know there as well. And be sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube as well so that you don't miss out on any future lessons. Thank you so much for your time. I'll talk to you again very soon.